Coming up on show 598, Tesla's Q3 delivery and production report. The highs, the lows, and the sheer madness around parts of the conversation. As well as that, a couple of other stories to get through today. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to EV News Daily. Uh, this is what happened on Wednesday, the 2nd of October. My name is Martin Lee. I go through every EV story I can find every day and whittle it down to what you need to know to save you time. Uh, not necessarily recording today's show actually on Wednesday. I'm a little late recording this, but I'd made my notes and then I was away, some travelling in Wales, actually, watching some rally cars. So that's why I'm recording slightly later. But on the bright side, it has given me another few hours, actually a couple of days, to digest the news today and then soak up some of the reaction and then try and put two and two together and get a relatively sensible thought at the end of the day uh, from my brain. Well, Tesla released its production and delivery numbers for the third quarter of 2019. That is July to September. Tesla made over 96,000 vehicles. They delivered around 97,000 vehicles in both the US and other territories. According to Tesla Rati, Tesla stated it had produced a total of 16,000 Model S's and X's in the quarter. Model 3 production was almost 80,000, a total of 17,500 Model S and X's, and almost 80,000 Model 3's were delivered in the third quarter as well. These production numbers and delivery numbers always vary a little bit too separate and importantly different things prior to the release of tesla's q3 production and delivery reports wall street analysts now the analysts in wall street the analysts the experts hmm, were guessing ninety four and a half thousand deliveries okay bear that one in mind the up until recently the analysts were thinking eh, about ninety four and a half thousand from Tesla themselves, they say that in addition, we achieved record net orders in Q3. We're entering Q4 with an increase in our order backlog, as was also the case in Q2. Nearly all of our Model 3 orders were received from customers who did not previously hold a reservation, solidifying the transition to generating strong organic demand. We're continuing to focus on increasing production to meet that demand. Wonderful news that they go into quarter four with even more orders on the books. Let's have a look at the traditional EV websites. We'll go to Electrek, who say that over the last week, we've been reporting that Elon Musk told employees in an email that Tesla had a shot at delivering 100,000 vehicles during the third quarter. Uh, Tesla was in full force, end of quarter delivery push. But a day before the end of the quarter, sources told Electrek they were a few thousand short of the goal. Their take on it is based on what we know in terms of net orders. Clear that the missed goal is not a demand problem. It's a production and logistics problem, which is going to be partly fixed by the Gigafactory 3 in China. It's going to increase Tesla's overall production capacity and free up some capacity in Fremont for a quicker turnaround of markets outside China. So this is how we are looking so far. Amazing news Tesla's breaking records. It's producing and delivering more cars than ever before. It's beaten Wall Street, what they thought a week ago, the uh, the consensus opinion, 94,500. It smashed it. So, this is what happened. According to Yahoo Finance, investors were unimpressed by the record number of cars that Tesla produced last quarter and sent the stock price reeling. It shed over 5% on Thursday as Wall Street questioned their valuation and their ability to turn a profit. However, the results fell short of some of Wall Street's more rosy estimates and the 100,000 mark that Elon Musk reportedly told employees was a real possibility. Although the company has boosted overseas deliveries and incentivized sales, Tesla remains dogged by doubts about its cash flow and ability to sustain production, says Yahoo. One of the users on their forum said this. Factset, which is the group of analysts, Factset had estimated 96,000. Then, when Elon Musk hoped for 100,000, and that email leaked out of the company, as I'm sure Elon knows any of his emails are, have the possibility of leaking out the company, Factset's number magically jumped 
from what was a well-considered, I'm sure, well-thought-out 96,000 that they'd spent many, many minutes, think, many hours, I mean, day, days, months thinking about, sorry. Uh, I'm sure they carefully analysed it. Overnight, that number jumped to 99,000. What changed, apart from a leaked email? So, then when Tesla released their number of 97,000, it was seen as a miss. It was a beat in every possible way of looking at it. Record numbers of Teslas delivered. Record numbers of electric cars getting into people's hands and people just having tons of fun in them and taking their friends and family out in people who then immediately go, well, I've got to buy one of these. These are brilliant, these electric cars. However, the so-called experts drove the number up and therefore the number was a miss. Let's go to Engadget, Tesla's record-setting second quarter. Wasn't a fluke, says Engadget. In praise of Tesla, the EV builder has broken the record again with its initial initial delivery estimates for the third quarter. 97,000 cars reached customers, says Engadget. And crucially, their newcomers, much like in Q2, nearly all of the 80,000 Model 3s delivered in the period went to customers who didn't hold a reservation. That's a sign of strong organic demand, if you ask Tesla say N Gadget. Brilliant news. What about CNET? Well, CNET say that Tesla fell short of 100,000 vehicles delivered in Q3. This 100,000 number is somewhat of a self-inflicted wound. Tesla's Elon Musk hinted that they could reach 100,000 vehicles delivered in the quarter, as they say, close but no cigar is the headline for CNET. This, once again, would not have been a problem had it not been for the email, but then if you don't send the email, how on earth is a CEO of a company meant to motivate and communicate with tens of thousands of employees if they can't send an email? What about The Verge? Setting back-to-back -back delivery records is significant, say The Verge. I couldn't agree more. Back-to-back delivery records. Tesla got off to such a relatively slow start in 2019. The last two quarters have blown people away. That progress should mute concerns. The company was exhausting demand for the Model 3 in North America, say The Verge. Yes, I agree. It, it should do, but it won't do for many reasons. After selling so many in 2018, as well as struggling to establish a presence for the car in Europe and China, writes The Verge, Elon told employees in a leaked email before the end of the quarter they had a shot at breaking 100,000 deliveries, which he called an incredibly exciting milestone. And Elon even asked Tesla employees to rally resources to hit the mark. The kind of call to arms that he's now famous for making, and which some say has backfired on him, in terms of the share price, the market's reaction to Tesla's Q3 results was unforgiving, says Simon at Tesla Arty. Tesla's stock 4% down in after hours, and it would continue to go down. Bearish outlooks were shared by analysts uh, covering the company once more, and questions about the demand for Tesla's vehicles were rekindled, says Tesla Arty, uh, with Tesla... Uh, official delivery figures falling short of the 100,000 mark. It became pretty easy to frame the narrative as disappointing for deliveries. The numbers are anything but, considering that sales among veteran automakers in the US experience their own difficult third quarter. Japanese car maker Toyota, not doing so well. Japanese car maker Honda, not doing so well. Double digit declines were much worse than analysts could have possibly anticipated for those two companies. Ford, the maker of America's most popular vehicle, saw its sales sink almost 5% year over year. Tesla's 16.2% increase. So in a market where car sales and truck sales and Ford and Honda and Toyota were really struggling, Tesla doing double-digit growth, it's just not enough. And you know what? It's enough for me. That's it with me and Tesla financial information. I've just had it because the whole thing is a sham. It's driven by people who want to see the price go up and want to see the price go down to benefit themselves. It has nothing to do with advancing the world to electric, clean, green, sustainable transport. They are lining their own pockets by manipulating the markets and I'm sorry that Tesla is on the end of it. But you know what? I don't care anymore. I don't care. I've reached the point over the last couple of days. Tesla are doing it. They're showing all the others how to make electric cars. Everyone's responding because of Tesla. Elon's doing it. They're winning. Whatever happens to the share price, 
It's not going to zero. Whatever happens, whether it doubles or whether it halves, they're doing it. They're putting amazing cars on the streets. And maybe you own one of these incredible cars. Who cares? Who ca If you own shares in Tesla, good luck to you. That's your choice where you spend your money. And I hope you make a lot of money or whatever. But you know what? I don't care anymore. All of this, share price up, share price down. Tesla just broke records once again. And the headlines are negative. Well, this podcast is here, hopefully, hopefully this podcast is here to shine a light on the truth, the reality of the matter, that the fact that they are delivering, producing and delivering more cars than they ever have done. And quarter four looks like it's going to be another amazing quarter, whether it's just below or whether it's just above. Think about it. Every quarter, another hundred thousand electric cars replace piston cars and that's just from one single manufacturer the world is heading in a great direction and i'm so pumped about it and i'm so peed careful this podcast is marked as clean on itunes i'm so peed about the negative headlines over the last couple of days around tesla i am done i'm done with analysts i'm done with the financial side of it it's all a charade there's players at this who are just making money share price going up share price going down you know what? Let's focus on the cars. Let's focus on the amazing cars they're making. And you know what? I'm done. I'm absolutely done with the financials and all that side of it. I have reported on it in the past, but it makes no sense whatsoever. The whole thing's a game played by people who don't care about the core mission, what you and I care about. So that's it. No more. Right, let's move on to Volkswagen and the truck maker, Trayton, T-R-A-T-O-N, if you haven't heard of them, Trayton, invests billions in e-mobility there. Volkswagen's commercial vehicle subsidiary, Trayton, announced that it's Man, Scania and Volkswagen uh, Camihos e Onibus brands. They're going to invest a total of more than 1 billion euros in e-mobility in the next six years. According to Electrive, Scania and Man will use a new system for the first time in a new series of electric buses next year in 2020. Each brand is going to adapt a modular drive to application and, and image according to what they need to do for their own their own applications. Uh, Triton's introduced a cross-brand development budget, they call it, mm, uh, for electromobility and teams from all over the group are working on the next generation of e-drive systems, battery management and the compatible frame structure. Awesome. It's not just the cars, but it's the trucks and the buses and the commercial vehicles that are getting their own platform and mega money going into that. You know, on a different subject, you know I'm loving Volvo and Polestar at the moment. Ahead of its world premiere in less than a couple of weeks, the electric Volvo, the XC40, is back for a second round of teasers, revealing more details about the company's first ever EV. The eco-friendly crossover was first previewed three years ago in 2016 and it's now getting ready to put on the production ready apparel with a design different from the conventionally powered xc40 says motor one pure electric power for the xc40 well done volvo we love you for doing that man i'd love one of these cars they are very 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 nice another benefit as well of course to getting rid of the pistons up front is you can now have a frunk frunk lovers are going to like the 30 liters of extra cargo volume in the front of the XC40. It's not the biggest space, but small items, charging paraphernalia, cables and all those kind of things, even a stinky takeaway that you go and get on a Friday or Saturday night and, and take home, but you don't want stinking out your passenger compartment, pop it in your frunk. Lovely. Job done. Right, final story today with the beginning of a new quarter. A reminder for buyers of GM cars uh, that the US has decreased the federal tax credit that you get the the money off your tax bill in the future it's decreased from three thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars to one thousand eight hundred and seventy five dollars according to inside evs the new lowered amount will stay available for the next two quarters through to the end of march 2020 after which gm plugins don't get that federal tax credit and no signs that any other manufacturer is going to get anywhere near 200,000 cars by the end of 2020, which is when at the moment, according to current plans and legislation, the incentives will end. That has meant that Tesla and GM have done a big service for the EV market. They have effectively been disadvantaged to the tune of $7,500 for pure electric cars for everyone they sold. If other car makers now get in on the EV game, they are, of course, getting those 
those big, big discounts that are now gone for Tesla. All right, moving on to our question of the week. We'll read out your answers on Sunday. Have you named your car? And if so, what have you named your electric car? I'm not a car namer, by the way. Haven't got a Tesla, so haven't got to. I, it's an it. It's not a she or a he, and it hasn't got a name. But I know that so many people do give their cars a personality. They become almost like part of the family, and I love that. So, what's yours? Email me, hello at evnewsdaily.com, or leave a comment on Facebook and YouTube. Well, there are 254 patrons of the podcast. Thank you for your generosity, for keeping me going. Uh, 597 previous shows online. The archive is online for free, for as long as I can possibly keep that storage, that archive online, it will stay online. Uh, if you subscribe to the new shows, you get them first and free and automatically if you hit subscribe. Have a wonderful day. I will catch you tomorrow. And remember, there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.